4, which means you would have been home by 4.30. Oh, that's what you reckon. And according to me, that would give you plenty of time. I was busy, all right. It takes five minutes to take the clothes off the line, Justine. Because I asked you to do it. Oh. I mean, if you helped out with just a little bit around the house, the house problem, the housework wouldn't be such a problem. Nobody asked us to help at home. Oh, school? We both know that's a lie. Katrina doesn't have to. Yes, well, her dad works from home and her mum works there as well. And your dad's just not round anymore. It's not my fault. Beg your pardon? Nothing. No, come on, tell me what you said. I said that it's not my fault that dad's not around. I don't see why I have to be slaver just because you and Dad can't get your crap together. Don't speak to me like that. Just see what I mean? You're always telling me what to do and what I'm not allowed to do. Daniel's right. You don't want me to have any fun. Daniel? Are you saying him again? No. Don't lie to me, young lady. Fine! He picked me up after school today. He's not a drugged out loser like you think he is, Mum. He's got a job. And unlike you, he loves me. That's not fair, Justine. You know that I love you. <laughs> Whatever. Try showing it sometime. Look, you know how I feel about him. You are not allowed to see him anymore. You're telling me what to do again. You're ruining my life. Well, as long as you're living underneath my roof, you will live by my rules. Now clean up this mess. Dinner will be ready in ten minutes. Yeah, well maybe I don't want to live under this house anymore. There's a bit of willow out there and I'm going to find it. And Jesus told the story of the man with two sons. I just told you I didn't have time, all right? Oh, look, what have you been doing all day? I've been busy with my own stuff. Look, Dad and I can't do everything around here. You've got to help me out sometime, you know. Dad and you can do everything on this farm better than I can. I mean, I'm useless around here. You're only useless because you won't help out. Whatever, just forget it, okay? I'm leaving. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property amongst them, and not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country where he swindled his wealth in wild living. What? Anyone got a match? Okay, we'll talk later. See, I've got a bunch of uh, postcards here from my brother. Just want to burn him before Dad gets a hold of him. Listen to this. This is his idea of keeping in touch with his family over the years. Dear Dad and everyone, this is the view from my penthouse. How I laugh with a vengeance, eh? And not a cow or a chook in sight. High life, all right. And do you know how he got the money for it? He got Dad to take out a second mortgage on the place and then he just shot through. How about this one? Dear Dad, raging all night, having a wonderful time. Glad you're not here. Just kidding. Just kidding, my foot. Can you imagine the sort of things that he's up to in the city? All the while I'm stuck here behind a tractor just pushing dirt. But you know, Dad just keeps on missing the little twerp. I, I said to him, look, Dad, just forget about it. You may as well be dead the way he's treated us. You know, think about me. But he still misses the little twerp. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to the citizens of that country, who sent him out into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave anything. And then we get this one. Singing a bit of a different tune. Dear Dad, how's life down on the farm? Things are getting pretty tough here in the city. Please note the change of address. It's cheaper living down this end of town. I made sure that Dad didn't see that particular postcard. Well, no need to get him upset, you know, for no reason. Well, knowing my little brother is probably only after money anyway, so... I kept a pretty close watch on the mailbox and uh, I was lucky I did. Listen to the next one that came in. Dear Dad, missing the old place. Haven't heard from you in a while. I'm heading back east to look for work. I'll be in touch when I get my act together again. That's the last we'll be hearing from him, I thought. 
good riddance. And so it was until we get this telegram today. 1045 trains, all it says. And you'll never guess who it was from. Let him rot at the station, I said to Dad. <laughs> but Dad was too busy revving up the Land Rover to even hear me. Back for lunch, he yells, and then he says, go get that prize Vila from the creek paddock. The prize calf. My prize calf. I bet you he'll slaughter him. I bet you he's going to have a party this weekend for him. For him! What about me? I never left this farm. I never disobeyed my dad or dad's orders. I stayed on this rotten farm, hand feeding that rotten little calf and paying off this rotten debt. All the while, good time Charlie was off in the city having fun. But you know what? I bet you he's going to be forgiven. He's treated us like dirt and now he's coming back and dad's going to forgive him. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he had him back, safe and sound. I knew it. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. Look, Dad, I know how you feel about the little twerp. But what about me? I never left the farm, I never disobeyed your orders, but you've never done any of this for me. But when my brother, your son, who's wasted all your money in the city on prostitutes and wild living, when he comes home, you kill the fat calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything that I have is yours. But we have to celebrate because this brother of yours, he was dead, and is now alive. He was lost, and is now found.
myself like it's hot And he can't believe that he fell so low He's so poor and so soft And so he's so sorry and his toe And unfolds as he rolls down his back Cause his life is torn and it's dropping much longer So we'll head back to shape, take a servant's way. Walk in the road, mirrors a home, he's all broke. His dad's running to his arms are wide open. All these stupid cries thrown aside by his dad. He just loves his son so much, he just cries. And calls for some food and some clothes, cause he's out of supplies. But man, his brother cannot understand why. This is so wrong, so wrong it's not right to help this guy. Cause he left this all alone, his brother saying to his father, he was greedy, now he's needy. Son of you and said he didn't want to be your son at all. Now you got your arm around him, and this is too much for me because I don't stay in this spot. I never left this plot. What's he got in me? Not a thing is what I've got to show for all the work that I have done. But my brother, why? He wasted every single thing you ever gave him. Should be shot. Son, I love you, said the father, don't you know? Everything I have is mine, you got. But he's my son, is he not? And I love him a lot. The father's love means his son will not be forgotten. Yeah, but you Thank you, Bob, man.